us right now is Kathy Wood from ARK Investments, based in the U.S., sub-advisor to the Emerge Canada Funds. Uh, Kathy, very nice to meet you and great to sit down with you and talk to you today. Thank you, Pierre. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Kathy, what's happening is, is uh, Emerge, which is based in the U.S., as, uh, is, is coming up on its five-year track record and uh, you're about to launch in Canada, Emerge Canada ETFs. Yes. Uh, in particular, your, 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 your line of ETFs that you're bringing to market will yes. be on the uh, disruptive in innovation theme. Yes. So let's talk about some of these areas, these thematic areas that, that, that you're overseeing mm -hmm. on, on behalf of Emerge uh, at ARC. Uh, so uh, I'll let you pick one, your favorite. Well, I think the way I like to set this up so that um, advisors can understand, can, can place this is, um, we've got a lot of ETFs out there that are sector-based or are basically patterned after traditional growth and value indexes. We're a great complement to those because these disruptive okay. innovations, uh, and, and we center our research around these five innovation platforms uh, that we're researching, they're going to be very dis disruptive to the traditional world order. So traditional indexes are where they are because of what has happened historically. Right. We are focused on original research, first pr principles research, that is trying to figure out where the world is going, how te technology is going to transform the world, every sector. And as we're doing our research, what we're finding is sectors are blurring because of technology. So all of our analysts are very comfortable with technology, whether they're industrial analysts or healthcare analysts or media analysts or retail analysts, they're all comfortable with technology. And in fact, we don't even segment them out as media, consumer discretionary. They are platform analysts. Uh, and the five platforms are DNA sequencing, which right. if you ask me which is the most <coughs> underestimated, I think the healthcare transformation we're about to witness is going to shock people because it, it, it involves curing disease. And we've been treating symptoms for so long, we don't even think curing is really possible. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're yeah. now moving into an age where we can identify through DNA sequencing mutations that occur mm -hmm. and mutations in genes are the earliest manifestation of disease. And at the same time, we're, see, we're seeing tools like CRISPR gene editing right. that can correct those mutations, which are nothing more than programming errors in our genomes, which means we're going to see the cure for disease. We'll be able to discover cancer in stage one and correct it. Now, mm -hmm. this is going to take a number of years, but first human trials are this year in pediatric blindness. Right. Think about that. So we've got uh, our innovation platforms like DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology. And, and not only are sectors blurring, but these innovation platforms are blurring or converging to create autonomous taxi platforms, which we think are right. going to be ubiquitous going out there in five years. Uh, so what is that? It's Robots, autonomous vehicles are robots. Mm -hmm. Energy storage, they will be electric. Electric vehicles will be much cheaper than gas-powered vehicles. And they're going to be powered by artificial intelligence. So we think research departments are going to have to restructure if they are going to get innovation right. right. And we've already restructured because this is all we do. Is this kind of like what Masayoshi's son talks about is the singularity where, where things come together into yes, one? Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, he's very big on artificial intelligence. Oh, yes, yes. Now, yeah. he's in the private markets, and what we're seeing is, you know, the dream is alive and well in the private mm -hmm. markets, and we think too much capital is chasing too few opportunities in the private markets. Mm -hmm. Very crowded. Sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, uh, and private equity investors. Uh, at this, so we have that going on, and then we have in the traditional uh, markets, the, the public markets, a move to passive. So what right. has happened? There's a void when it comes to innovation in the public markets, a void of research, 
correct valuations, huge inefficiencies. Right. We're trying to capitalize on those. And uh, if That's these- That's funny because if, if, you, if you talk to uh, some of the folks in the ETF crowd, in the yes. ETF uh, 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 fold, um, they're of the mindset that everything's efficient. That, that markets, you know, like for example, Canada, for example, are efficient. The data bears out everything, you know, I, I, there's always a, um, I think what I find interesting uh, personally is, is that, that there's, there's always an academic argument that's just confusing enough to offset any motivation to, you know, for our investors in general to, to look beyond passive well, or to look beyond it's a no. great point you're making, and I think, again, we haven't had five, we haven't had multiple innovation platforms evolving at the same time that mm -hmm. are technologically enabled and very disruptive since the late 1800s, early 1900s. So that was telephone, electricity, internal combustion engine, transform mm -hmm. the world. We really haven't had that uh, uh, happen until now. Now we have five five innovation platforms, and they are going to be so disruptive, you wait and see how, in hindsight, how inefficiently the public markets have been priced. So, now it brings me to question, are a lot of these companies that are, that are disrupting, are they available to investors, or are many of them still private or in the early funding stages, or? Or, or so the private ones uh, are, I, I mean, if, if individuals have access to that world, fine, right. but as I, as, I, as I mentioned, we think it's very overvalued. We think the undervalued part of uh, innovation in the equity markets is in the public markets. And when you because, think about because it- Because those names have been ignored. In the public markets, right. right. Yeah, uh, investors are, are have shifted their gaze. Yeah, elsewhere. they're yeah. starting to come back. We're starting right. to see our, our our strategies are doing very well because there is this sense out there. Wait a minute, the ground is shifting underneath me. Uh, this private world's very expensive. If they, if these companies in the private world want to scale and really hit the tipping points that get them into the the S curve that causes exponential growth, they have to be in the public markets. Right. And what's happening, you'll see many of the pu uh, private uh, companies go public and they fall from grace. We just lie in wait, waiting for them. Some of them, like Beyond Meat, which we wouldn't touch, but they will go crazy to yeah, the upside. We don't get that. <laughs> they certainly have, yeah. It's not what we do. Right. It's, uh, there's something about those that is, I guess, culturally very interesting, but not interesting to us at all. Uh, the ones that are interesting to us tend to come down to earth, come to valuations that are more in line with the public markets, right. and then and then they're a go for us. Now, um, is is the is the theme of uh, inefficiency is that a universal across your your selections? Yes, across, we yeah. we think when it comes to innovation and the disruptions that are about to take place, they're all at tipping points. All of these uh, right. platforms are at tipping points. And they hit tipping points because costs have dropped enough. And, and with each decline in costs, there's a new wave of demand that's unleashed. So they're all hitting tipping points right now. Uh, and if we're right, they're going to disrupt the traditional world order so that what individuals and investors see in their portfolios right now in the traditional benchmarks, they'll, they'll find a lot of value traps. Those companies that are going to be disrupted by ours. So we're, we are really, if nothing else, we're a very good hedge uh, against those value traps in traditional portfolios. Right. Well, it's going to be very exciting to see how it all unfolds. Yes, yes. I, we're excited every day. We research every day, and yeah. I feel very privileged to be doing this every day. Kathy, thank you so much for your time. It's thank you, It's been a Pierre. pleasure talking to you. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. Thank you.